All right, guys, I, I tried to do one of these, uh, or I did one of these clinics before, and I tried to ride through with the microphone, and it didn't work so well. So I'm going to talk through the pattern first um, with you guys and kind of tell you, you know, what, what I would do if I was running that pattern and, um, you know, some, maybe some things that you can do to help you plus those maneuvers and, um, and try to stay out of the penalty box. So we'll do the, uh, the select prelims pattern first, uh, select amateur ranch routing prelims pattern. So this pattern, you're gonna come in at the gate at a walk. Um, and you know, my goal at the walk is I like to see a horse covering some ground, not, not to, to an excessive amount. You know, you see some of those ones come in at that running walk. You know, you're not gonna use that on a ranch. All this stuff comes back to when you look at it and if you question it, you know, think, would that be practical on a ranch? And that goes for all of these maneuvers. Um, so I like to see a horse, you know, like he is right now, uh, had it, you know, bright eyed, ears up, looking around, attentive, covering some ground, you know, a nice relaxed walk that you'd want to, you know, <clears throat> walk across the field on. You move up to your trot. Um, and talking about places in the arena, you know, I always have, try to have a plan. I look at the pattern, I look at the arena, and I have, I have a plan. Um, as to where I'm going to do what maneuvers. You know, this is a guide, but it's not written in stone. Um, so, you know, if you've got a horse that, that walks really well and you want to show that walk off, maybe walk a little bit further. You know, if you know a walk, your walk's your, your weak spot, maybe don't walk quite as far. Um, but, you know, in this arena, I'd probably walk about to the forward sign um, and hit that arena walking, you know, be ready to go when you come in here. Hit that arena walking, be confident, walk up to that forward sign. And, you know, I'd stay about 10 or 15 feet off of the rail. Um, I think if you get up on that rail, you know, it, it, it doesn't really show how well your horse guides. You know, if that judge has to question, are you using that rail um, to guide your horse or not? Uh, you don't want that running through his head. So, I'd, you know, I'd stay 10 or 15 feet off of that rail. I know you don't have a ton of room in this arena, but um, just not on the rail. Nice ground covering trot, um, same as, you know, at the walk. Um, Biggest thing is when you move up to that extended trot at the top of the arena, and I would probably, about the John Deere sign, um, move up to that extended trot. There needs to be a definite change in speed, and, and if your horse will get up there and get, to, get into that gear quickly, that's a higher degree of difficulty to me. You know, if you take, you know, a quarter of the way across the arena to really get up to that speed, where you want to be, you know, that's, that's, that's not as high a degree of difficulty. So I like to see kind of a horse, a definite change in pace and, and a quick response to, you know, from go from an, a, a jog or, or a regular trot up to an extended trot. Um, extended trot, you know, try to leave that same pace around the end of the arena. On this side of the arena, when you show to these judges, these judges are going to be sitting right here in these stands. And if you get right up against that wall, they can't see you. Um, one thing, you know, if, if they can't see you, they can't judge you. So make sure you stay far enough off of that rail where the judge has a good opportunity to see you. Um, pick up your lope, uh, nice regular lope down the, down the side. Um, you know, just, just picture, you know, if I was gonna go out and I'm not in a hurry, I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna lope across the field and I'm gonna check fence or I'm gonna, you know, check on my cows. You want something that's comfortable to sit on. Um, it shouldn't be a lot of work. Just, just you know, you're just out loping across the field. If it looks like, if I look at it and think, yeah, I'd like to sit on that. You know, I could sit on that all day. That's going to plus that maneuver. Um, and and that also goes along with being a good mover. You know, a good mover is obviously more comfortable to sit on uh, than a horse that's not not quite as good a mover. Um, but but just kind of keep that in mind when you lope down that that first lope, um, what I like to sit on this all day, you know, uh, is, it, is this comfortable? You know, what, whatever horse, whatever speed your horse is comfortable at, um, you know, should be a ground covering forward lope. Um, and some horses are going to cover more ground than others, but, but the biggest thing is, you know, if I was on this horse today and I had to lope across the field, you know, where would I be at? Um, come down here to the stop. I like to see a horse kind of get in the ground and stop, be responsive. Um, I don't like to see him slide. Uh, you know, if, if you're out on wet grass and you go slide 10 feet, it doesn't usually turn out too well. You know, the horse usually falls on its butt. And, you know, I like to see him kind of get in the ground and an effective stop. 
Um, let your horse saddle for a second, get his feet back underneath of him. Uh, you know, that's a good place to just kind of take a deep breath and get ready for the rest of your pattern. Go ahead and do your one and a half turn, um, turns to the right. And if you have a really handy horse, you know, what I, what I like to do with more, my more broke horses is in this pattern, do that one and a half and try to lope right off out of it. You know, and get up into that extended gear pretty quickly. Um, that's a higher degree of difficulty to me. If, if you know, if you're, if you're not to that point or that's not your horse's best maneuver, you know, take a second, get yourself organized, lope off. Um, but, you know, if you can, I, to me, that, that's a little harder to do. Um, and on a ranch, you know, if I was going to turn around, I'm probably turning around to go get something. So I'm not going to, you know, take a long time to get set up to, to, to go get it. So I like to see a horse kind of turn around, lope right off, and get up into that extended lope pretty quickly. Um, the extended lope, you know, it, it's not a dead out run. It's not a, a speed contest. That extended lope just needs to be a nice ground covering faster than your regular lope um, gear. Um, biggest thing is from that extended lope to your regular lope, the judge should not have to question did or did they or did they not come back? Did they, did they or did they not change speeds, you know? Um, push that extended lope to the point where when you come back, there's no question in that judge's mind. Come back to your regular lope, um, up around the end. Here's one spot in this pattern I see a lot of people get in trouble. Uh, this walk over right here comes up a whole lot quicker than, than you think it's going to. This lead change needs to happen halfway between these logs and the end of the arena. Um, so, you know, is that that orange line? You guys, you guys can kind of come in here and, and look at it and see where you want to, um, where you want to do that lead change. But give yourself plenty of room to do the lead change. Continue straight to whatever point that you pick on the wall to go to. And, and ride straight to that wall. So many people change leads and they let their horse dive after that change and they end up over here and all of a sudden they gotta make a really quick corner, break to that walk and walk over those logs and it's just not pretty, okay? If you, come, if you have you know, a spot on this rail you're gonna pick out halfway between the logs and the gate, come across, change leads, you know, you have three or four strides, get yourself organized come deep over here. That's one place that I would come, come a little deeper. Um, you know, the judges might not be able to see you as well, but you're gonna make up for it over, over this way. Um, get square with those poles. Uh, make sure you're in the center of those poles when you make this corner. Break to the walk, walk over those poles. Um, pick up your trot immediately after the poles. Um, same thing here, you know, don't, don't make that corner over there, don't make that a circle, make it a sharp corner, you know, trot right over to that wall or wherever you're going to turn. I would turn about 10 feet off the wall, pick up that extended trot deep in here. And the way this arena is shaped, you know, probably about where that smart pack sign is, I'd come across with my extended trot. Um, same thing at that extended trot, you know, you want to see a good stop from the extended trot. Uh, you know, at a, 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 a fish, efficient, effective stop, not necessarily a sliding stop, but you don't want them to pull on the bridle. And, you know, if you can sit down and open your legs a little bit and that horse will kind of get in the ground and stop, um, and then into your backup. And same thing here, I like, personally, I like to, to make that stop back up all kind of one motion. Um, some people will stop and they'll kind of loosen the reins and they'll, you know, adjust their saddle and back up. You know, if I'm gonna stop and I need to back up, I'm probably just gonna stop and back up. So I, I would stop, you know, all one motion, back up. So I'm gonna run through this. I'll try to do it for you guys one time. Hopefully I can. Um, and then if you guys have any questions about this pattern, we'll do that. Just gonna stay on there. Uh,
You want to talk to you? Sure. Or you want to take questions on that pattern first and then you talk? Yeah. Okay, guys, do you have any questions on that pattern? Or any questions in general? Yes? You know, that's a personal preference to me. Um, to me, if you're out there, I don't know if you've ever showed like the branch rail class or whatever, but when I stand and I, and I uh, over top of my horse, I can't do it very long. My legs get really tired. Um, you know, personally, I like to post um, those shorter strided horses that you're like up, down, up, down, up, down. You know, you may want to stand on them. Um, but on 90% of my horses, I post. Now, it doesn't make any difference to the judge whether you stand or you post. You're not going to get scored any differently. Um, I just tell people how, however you can show your horse the best. If you're more comfortable posting, post. If you're more comfortable standing, stand. Yes? I'm not going to hug the wall. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come in and I'm going to head, you know, towards that smart, smart pack sign. I'm not going to come in and make a square corner. Um, I'm just going to come in, head towards that smart pack sign, you know, make my arc and pick up my trot. You know, this isn't a, a real technical class. You know, if you, if you go trying to make it more complicated than it is, um, you know, I think you're going to get in trouble. Uh, just think about, you know, if, if I was going to walk over, you know, and do something over there, how would I get there? Don't make it any more complicated than that, okay? That's, this, this class is supposed to be about, you know, a, a working ranch horse. Um, and demonstrating the skills that you need on the ranch. So if you ever have a question, I always kind of go back to, you know, does that make sense? Would that be something that I would do if I was working on a ranch? Anybody else? Yes. It's not a penalty. No, no, there's no, no markdown on it. I won't, I, you know, I'm not going to say that some judges don't have pet peeves about that. Um, I'm stronger. Every, it seems like every time I pick up the diagonal, I'm always picking up that left diagonal. Uh, you know, if I'm showing in a rail class, in a, before I make the corner, I'm going to change it. Um, but in a short little distance like that, I'm not going to change it. I'm more worried about showing that horse to the best of his potential. You know, they're, they're judging the horse. They're not judging, you know, what diagonal I'm on. There's no penalty for being on the incorrect diagonal. Anybody else? Yes. It's a turnaround. You don't want to come in here and spin like a rainer. You just want to efficiently and effectively turn that horse around. Um, you know, you, you don't want him lugging around. Um, you know, you just want to, and he's a little wound up. I didn't ride him today, but, you know, effic efficiently and effectively turn around. You know, if, if, if that cow had taken off and you needed to turn around and go get it, you know, you want to turn a working turnaround. Um, you don't want, I don't like to see them, you know, put that nose in the ground like the Rainers and spin around 900 miles an hour out of control. You, you know, just, just think about it like that. Like if you, you know, if you're sitting here and all of a sudden a cow took off over that way and you had to, you had to, you know, turn around and, and go get it, just think of it like that. Um, you know, no resistance in the turn. Um, they're not going to penalize you necessarily for, uh, for over speed. Um, but to me, it's prettier just a, a good working turn. Um, any other questions? I'm sorry, I should be saying these questions so everybody can hear them. Down there? Okay. Sorry about that. He asked about the, 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 the turn. Should it be a spin or a turn? Um, and the, the posting uh, on the wrong diagonal, there's no penalty for it, and that's for some reason, every time I start posting, I'm on that left diagonal. My wife gets after me for it, but. Okay, I think Gino wants to talk here for a minute and then we'll move on to the amateur pattern. <laughs> 